Hi everybody, my name is Nairi. This video is for Erin. It's all about independence versus fostering attachment. So I can only speak from my experience as an adopter how things have gone with our boys who are now in their teens and we had when they were little boys as foster children. There's no such thing really as trying to foster too much attachment or spending too much time with a child that has childhood trauma. And in the early days, we found with our boys, the only way to build that trust was to have them very close to us. And whatever we did, wherever we went, be very sure that they knew that we were gonna be there for them because that was their only way of feeling safe. And that's gone on for many, many years. But there is a turning point, of course, when they get to an age where they need to start building independence and understanding in the world that we're not the only ones to be trusted. And if I'm honest with you, it's taken forever for them to trust us as well because of their background. They really still sometimes don't trust us. So it has taken for a long, long time for them to start trusting other people as well. Now, part of that for them has been going to school and working out that some teachers, not all of them, but some will be kind to them and will be understanding with them. Other ways that we've infiltrated things is from family members and close friends. So that to start with, we maybe spend that time with our adopted boys with those people so that we're still there we're still in the room so they still feel safe and they don't have to leave us but then over time maybe those trusted adults become the next people to have the boys for a couple of hours or spend a bit of extra time with them and yes there is a possibility I suppose that you can become quite drained by being that attachment figure as in our boys always seeking us out always wanting to know where we are I mean even when we're not together in the home if they've gone somewhere else they will always want to know what we've done and that's because they don't entirely feel safe without us so it can be draining and it can be counterproductive if they won't then try anything else but we've had to say no to so many things that they would normally be able to do at their age so if it's been an, a weekend away if it's been going to a particular party or staying with someone if we don't feel that they're going to be comfortable with it rather than are on the side of well let's give it a go a lot of the times we've said no if they want to try something and we think they're up for it of course we let them do that but it's very much been just letting out gradually over the years from us as a point of safety to introducing them to the world it's almost like an inner circle and then gradually introducing introducing layers upon layers and sometimes I think as adoptive parents we try too hard to normalize their situation and to normalize the fact that they've been adopted and therefore try out things too quickly maybe we try to force friendships activities that we want them to do but they're just not really sure they're not really ready for we try to make the world normal for them because we don't want them to feel different and that's that's good that's fair enough However, sometimes children just can't do it until they're ready because they just feel so anxious and so unsafe without you. But Erin was asking the question because she's not in the same situation as me about fostering, uh, building relationships with children and then um, how are they gonna become independent of her. And in her situation, there's going to be lots of different people looking after those children. So all I can say is, just like I would with my own sons, is talking about it with them openly about what those changes are going to be and who they're going to be with and making sure that they understand that whilst they might really love you and really like you and that's the case for our sons obviously they want to be around um, me and my husband a lot always want to know what we're doing that is okay for them to, to begin to understand that other people can be trusted just as much as us now of course we're their parents and Erin you might you know you're in a different situation but it's okay to start introducing them to other ideas about other people and other activities that are away from you and start to talk about the positive side of people that you know and activities that you think they might enjoy doing. So let me give you an example, because it's, it's always more practical for me to give you an example. So some of you might have been following me and know that we had to take our older son out of school. It's for, it was really dire, okay? I don't wanna go into it, but he only has to be at home for about six months before we're trying to introduce him to a college. So it's not homeschooling for very long. In that time, 
what we're trying to do is foster his independence because he only feels safe really in the home and he mostly feels safe with me and kind of with my husband but mostly me so his choice would be to be with me in the home doing things he's like he likes things like baking going on his computer things that are you know what he likes doing so do i let him carry on like that so this is where we kind of look at the other side of it i've built attachment with him since he's three years old i've tried my best to get him to see that the world is a safe place but he still doesn't really believe that so do i just go with that and allow him to be a home bird basically and maybe never even seek employment do i go with it because that continues to build attachment so my thoughts are no i don't now's the time for me to start showing him that other people can love him like him value him value his skill levels so whilst at school that wasn't the case and the peers that he was with sort of looked down on him and the academic side was a real struggle for him now it's time to show him that the outside world doesn't have to be a scary place so we've introduced him going up to a coffee morning and helping for a morning this week it's been amazing because we have found a dog walker that does dog sitting and my son is amazing with animals particularly dogs he's amazing he was super anxious before he went and i could have gone mm, you know what from an attachment point of view i don't know what i want to put him through this but because i knew the person and because i know my son's skills and because my gut reaction to it was that he's going to absolutely love it I was willing to put my neck on the line and actually put him through a little bit of anxiety to find out for himself that actually this person's probably going to really value him and really value his help as a teenager with these dogs and thank goodness it paid off and he came back and he had an amazing day and i honestly think this person will have him for more than one day a week because i know my son's really good with animals so it paid off and what it's shown him is that there are other people out there that are safe other people he can be with other activities outside of the home that doesn't need mean he needs to be around me or around his own dog he does keep mentioning his own dog because i think he would the way that he would then try to help his attachment anxieties is to take his dog to the dog walker with the other dogs so that he's got some security there but i've pointed out to him that that's not going to be likely possible so it's a balancing act and i think the more you know the child and the longer you're with the child the more you build up the connections in society community friends and family the better place you are to decide how much to let out that little bit of elastic that little bit of rope if you know how attachment works and start trying them out with things when it doesn't work as an adoptive parent you pull back in and you don't worry about what anybody else thinks. This is the hard bit. Other people will judge you because they think that your child should be ready for things and you know they're not. But you don't worry about that because you are the one who knows your child the best. So in an adoptive situation, you let go, try a few things, but you pull back when it doesn't work and you just go with it. Even if what you're doing is totally not age appropriate and you're treating the child much younger than what they are. When you're in a foster care situation or you're in a residential unit situation, you know that at some point that child is going to move on therefore you try your best to prepare them for it you allow them to attach to you you allow them to enjoy you but you're always talking about the future of other people that might be in their lives other activities they might be doing that are going to be equally as fun equally as good and you just make sure that they understand that however much they attach to you you cannot guarantee that you are going to be there for them because if you know that you're in a residential unit and other staff will come and go and you can't always guarantee that you are going to be in that job role you can't guarantee you're always going to be in the same job if you're a foster carer short term however long that is you know they're going to move on it's a case of just keeping that open dialogue going without being ashamed of it because it's not going to be your fault if you move on it's not going to be your fault if staff wrote to change it's not going to be your fault if 
a social worker decides it's time for the child to move on, they want a longer term foster placement or, you know, whatever. You know, things in foster care happen all the time. So I hope that helps. I know it's a kind of a mix up of things because we're talking about different case scenarios. If you've enjoyed, if you enjoy my channel, check it out. There's also membership there. So sometimes I will do member only videos and I'd love to see you on Fly Little Birds. Thank you.